Chapter 32, Part 1. This chapter is going to be divided into two parts. Dr. Kim's Experiment. Matt told Sora Artemisia, Listen, and Felito, what had happened at breakfast. The poor child, said the nun. I'll take the little ones to visit him. Why don't you come with us? But Matt was still smarting from the rejection he'd received. I have work to do. Don't leave it too long, said Sora Artemisia. It's harder to repair a friendship later. Matt watched as soccer players, circus folk, rodeo riders, wrestlers, and musicians were loaded into hovercrafts to be transported to the departing train. You don't look sorry to see them go, observed San Fuegos. I'm not. The longer they stayed around, the more they would have found out, Matt said. I told them it was strictly a children's party and that the older al Qurans preferred to stay away. I wonder if they believed that, said the boy. The laugh hovercraft loaded with musicians took off. They had averted their faces from Matt. The heffy flickered out his stiletto with that lightning speed that disturbed Matt and, it used, and used it to clean his fingernails. Sooner or later, people were going to wonder why no one has seen Senator Mendoza. They will assume, of course, that Glass Eye killed the drug lords when he took over their countries. What about Fanny? Isn't, that, isn't Glass Eye worried about her? San Fuegos laughed. He has more than a hundred daughters. He doesn't keep track. What do we do about doctors and nurses? They surely know by now what had happened. What, by now, what happened? They aren't going anywhere. Cienfuegos slid the stiletto into its sheath inside his sleeve. Matt remembered with a sick feeling that they had been microchipped during the orientation process. He wondered how Dr. Evis had done it. Did he knock them out with sleeping medicine first? Or did he pretend that they needed an immunization shot? Thinking of the doctors, Matt decided he should start asking the one in Ajo how he planned to cure the Egypts. He walked to the hospital with an asthma inhaler in his pocket in case he was affected by the air. By this time, he found it, it clean and fresh smell. Obviously, Fiona had kept up the place when she was in charge. Even the bullhead vines had been uprooted and gravel laid down. It wasn't attractive, but at least you didn't wind up with thorns embedded in your shoes. A nurse immediately ushered Matt to an office and brought him iced tea. Dr. Kim will be with you as soon as he's out of the operating room, she told him. Matt was surprised but pleased. It seemed that the doctor was already working on a cure. He looked through the books on a shelf while he waited and discovered they were in an alphabet he didn't even recognize. On the desk was a silver vase with a spray of purple orchids that reminded him of the greenhouses between the hacienda and the deserted church. He, had, he hadn't visited them for long. Herbs and vegetables for the garden were grown there, but the main attraction for him as a small child had been the flowers. Perhaps Chacho would like to see the flowers. Someday. Matt shrank from a meeting so soon after last night's disaster. What a pleasure to see you again, Mipatron, said Dr. Kim, coming into the office. He was the man who had treated Lissa when she had her night terrors. He moved from the grace he moved with the grace of an athlete, and when he shook Matt's hand, the boy felt a restrained power in his grip. The pleasure is mine as well, Matt said formally. The nurse said you were in the operating room. Have you found a way to, to remove the microchips? Only some, the doctor said. It's early days, I'm afraid. But you had success, Matt insisted. Not much, Dr. Kim said. I used a magnetic probe to take out perhaps 200 chips from a subject, and yet the remaining number was so great it made no difference. The behavior of the subject before he was sacrificed was unchanged. Sacrificed? Asked Matt, thinking, what are you talking about? It's a term scientists use when, the, when they terminate lab animals. After the operation, I removed the Egypt's brain and homogenized it to estimate the number of microchips. The doctor might have been sharing a recipe for clam chowder. You're talking about a human being. We could use that term, said Dr. Kim. But let's face it. He had the intellect of a lab rat, of a lab rat. The doctor rang a bell 
and an Egypt appeared with the tea tray and rice crackers. I see you have a drink, me Patron, but you might like to try my green tea. It's, Im it's imported from Korea and has an exquisite background flavor of ripe cherries. No, thank you, Matt said. Why didn't you send the Egypt back to work when, when he'd recovered? Why did you have to kill him? Dr. Kim smiled in the same smooth way that Dr. Rivas did when he explained the science to a layman. We have to collect data, he put strong. Other scientists would find our studies useless without verification of the results. In the ordinary experiment, no less than 40 lab animals are necessary before a paper can be published. I won't let you kill 40 Egypts, Matt exploded. The whole point of the experiment is to save them. Poor Dios, how many have you slaughtered already? Only five, the doctor said. And then he seemed to realize he was arguing with the Lord of Opium, not just a teenage boy. I thought you had given your approval. Dr. Rivas said, Dr. Rivas is in, is in serious danger of becoming a lab rat himself, shouted Matt. Where did you get the Egypts? How were they selected? Dr. Kim wiped his face. Believe me, they were close to their ex expiry dates. Nurse Fiona checked. She's not a damned nurse. She's a fraud. Matt promised to get Cienfuegos after her and lock her up. If there was such a thing as a jail in opium, I want this clearly I want this clearly understood, Dr. Kim. You are to sacrifice no more Egypts. You will study them and you will cure them. I want results as soon as possible. Matt's voice has had, had changed. There was a power in it. And an, infle an inflexible that will that that made Dr. Kim turn pale. It was El Patron's voice, full of the potential for extreme violence. I'll do anything you say, pleaded the doctor. I'll tell the other medical staff. The boy strode out of the office. You certainly showed him, said the vo old voice in Matt's mind. Put a blur up his tail, didn't you? I haven't had so much fun in years. Go back to where you belong, said Matt. You've got a tomb full of servants and treasure to play with. They're boring, complained El Patron. There's nothing like the like the living for entertainment. I refuse to listen to you. The boy went to the hacienda and played the piano until a shimmering curtain of music stood between him and the voice. Then he went in search of Cienfuegos. And I'll read part two tomorrow. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this recording, please give me a like or thumbs up. I would appreciate it. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe.